Hello. We are moving qu quite uh, far into the book Wonder. <clears throat> we are now into part six, and it's August's point of view again. And it starts out with August. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculty! In form and moving, how express and admirable! In action, how like an angel! In apprehension, how like a god! The beauty of the world! And that's from Shakespeare, Hamlet. I took a course on Shakespeare this summer. I love Shakespeare. North Pole. The spud lamp was a big hit at the science fair. Jack and I got an A for it. It was the first A Jack got in any class all year long, so he was psyched. All the science fair projects were set up on tables in the gym. It was the same setup as the Egyptian Museum back in December. Except this time, there were volcanoes and molecule dioramas on the tables instead of pyramids and pharaohs. And instead of the kids taking our parents around to look at everybody else's artifact, we had to stand by our tables while all the parents wandered around the room and came over to us one by one. Here's the math on that one. 60 kids in the grade, in the grade equals 60 sets of parents. That's about the size of our school's fifth grade. And doesn't even include grandparents. So that's a minimum of 120 pairs of eyes that find their way over to me. Eyes that aren't as used to me as their kids' eyes are by now. It's like how compass needles always point north, no matter which way you're facing. All those eyes are compasses, and I'm like the North Pole to them. That's why I still don't like school events that include parents. I don't hate them as much as I did at the beginning of the school year, like the Thanksgiving sharing festival. That was the worst one, I think. That was the first time I had to face the parents all at once. The Egyptian Museum came after that, but that one was okay because I got to dress up like a mummy and nobody noticed me. Then came the winter concert which I totally hated because I had to sing in the chorus. Not only can I not sing, but it felt like I was on display. The New Year art show wasn't as bad, but it was still annoying. They put up our artwork in the hallways all over the school and had the parents come and check it out. It was like starting school all over again, having unsuspecting adults pass me in the, in the stairway. Poor guy. Anyway, it's not that I care that people react to me. Like I've said a gazillion times, I'm used to that by now. I don't let it bother me. It's like when you go outside and it's drizzling a little. You don't put on boots for a drizzle. You don't even open your umbrella. You walk through it and barely notice, and barely notice your hair getting wet. But when it's a huge gym full of parents, the drizzle becomes like this total hurricane. Everyone's eyes hit you like a wall of water. Mom and Dad hang around my table a lot, along with Jack's parents. It's kind of funny how parents actually end up forming the same little groups their kids form. Like my parents and Jack's and Summer's mom all like and get along with each other. And I see Julian's parents hang out with Henry's parents and Miles's parents. And even the two Max's parents hang out together. It's so funny. I told mom and dad about it later when we were walking home and they thought it was a funny observation. I guess, it, I guess it's true like, like, that like seeks like, said mom. The Augie doll. For a while, the war was all we talked about. February was when it was really at its worst. That's when practically nobody was talking to us. And Julian had started leaving notes in our lockers the notes to Jack were stupid, like, you stink, big cheese, and nobody likes you anymore. I got notes like, freak, and another one that said, get out of our school, orc. Oh. Summer thought that we should report the notes to Miss Rubin, who was the middle school dean, or even Mr. Tushman, but we thought that we would that would be like snitching. Anyway, it's not like we didn't leave notes, too, though ours weren't really mean. They were the they were kind of funny and sarcastic. One was, "You're so pretty, Julie. You're, you're so p 
pretty. Julian, I love you. Will you marry me? Love, Beulah. Ours was, love your hair, XOX, Beulah. Who's Beulah? Another one, another was, you're a babe. Tickle my feet, XO, Beulah. <laughs> Beulah was a made-up person. Ah, oh, that's who Beulah is. That me and Jack came up with. She had really gross habits, like eating the green stuff in between. <laughs> in between her toes uh, and sucking on her knuckles. And we figured someone like that would have a real crush on Julian, who looked and acted like someone in a kid's bop commercial. There were also a couple of times in February when Julian, Miles, and Henry played tricks on Jack. They didn't play tricks on me, I think, because they knew that if they got caught bullying me, it would be a big time trouble for them. Jack, they figured, was an easier target so one time, they stole his gym shorts and played monkey in the middle with them in the locker room. Well, another time, Miles, who sat next to Jack in the homeroom, swiped Jack's worksheet off his desk, crumpled it in a ball, and tossed it to Julian across the room. This wouldn't have happened if Miss Potosa had been there, of course, but there was a substitute teacher that day, and subs never really know what's going on. Jack was good about this stuff. He never let them see he was upset, though I think sometimes he was. <clears throat> the other kids in the grade knew about the war, except for Savannah's group. The girls were neutral at first, but by March they were getting sick of it, and so were some of the boys. Like another time, when Julian was dumping some pencil sharpener shavings into Jack's backpack, Amos, who was usually tight with them, grabbed the backpack out of Julian's hand and returned it to Jack. It was starting to feel like the majority of boys weren't buying into Julian anymore. <laughs> then a few weeks ago, Julian started spreading this ridiculous rumor that Jack had hired some hitman to get him and Miles and Henry. This lie was so pathetic that people were actually laughing about him behind his back. Remember that we just didn't and told him to leave him alone. At this point, any boys who had still been on his side now jumped ship and were clearly neutral. So by the end of March, only Miles and Henry were on Julian's side, and I think even they were getting tired of the war by then. I'm pretty sure everyone stopped playing the plague game behind my back, too. No one really cringes if I bump into them anymore, and people borrow my pencils without acting like the pencil has cooties. <laughs> people even joke around with me, now sometimes like the other day i saw maya writing a note to ellie on a piece of pa of piece of ugly doll stationery and i don't know why but i just kind of randomly said did you guys know that the guy who created the ugly dolls based them on me maya looked at me with her eyes wide open like she totally believed me then when she realized i was kidding she thought it was the funniest thing in the world you are so funny august she said and then she told ellie and some of the other girls what it I had just said, and they all thought it was funny, too. Like, at first, they were shocked, but then they, when they saw I was laughing about it, they knew it was okay to laugh about it, too. And the next day, I found a little ugly doll keychain sitting on my chair with a nice little note from Maya that said, For the nicest Augie dog doll in the world, XO Maya. Six months ago, stuff like that would never have happened, but now it happens more and more. Also, people have really... Uh, have been really nice about the hearing aids I started to wear. Very good. So we'll leave it there um, after Augie gets a nice ugly doll present. That was very cute. The guinea pigs approve.